Over the past few days of focused work, I've come across quite a few updates and interesting headlines across various platforms. That's why today's episode is simply called Good to Know, an insight into the current world of AI news. When we talk about news, I have to raise a question, at least in the context of AI, as I sit here chewing on my chocolate pills. Does the term news even still apply? Or should we already be talking about something broader? AI flow, maybe? A non-stop stream of updates and releases that makes one thing very clear. AI never sleeps. Of course, no one can capture all of it. But I'll try to reflect a small part of what's been going on. Maybe there's something useful in it for you. Let's start with something from the world of video AI. Kling 2.5 Turbo now supports start and end frames. Just go to klingai.com. In the left-hand menu, click on Video. That'll take you to the creation page. You'll probably see that version 2.5 Turbo is already selected by default. If not, just pick it from the drop-down menu next to AI Video Generator. At the top, the key setting is the secondary tab called Image to Video. On the left, you select your start frame. On the right, your end frame. Let me show you two examples. In the first one, the scout jumps from this tower and grabs a rope mounted to the building. It almost makes you wish the scene wouldn't freeze midair. But if you want to continue it, just grab the final frame of that video and use it as the start frame for the next one. In the second example, I use the tower as the starting point and this mechanical beast with its handler as the ending point. If you prefer to use Turbo 2.5 in its standard mode, you can switch that in the bottom left corner. It now only costs 15 credits. The results are impressive. You can almost feel the impact as the creature slams into the ground. The second topic takes us back to something I've covered before, Marble World Labs. With the platform now officially released, you can dive into 3D environments based on your own images. Just go to marble.worldlabs.ai. A lot has changed since my original test. You can now use text, a single image, multiple images, video, or even a 3D scene as input. This overview graphic gives a pretty good idea of what's possible. The worlds you create can be edited, expanded, and exported in the format of your choice. Again, let me show you two examples. On the start page, click Create on the left. You'll get the input panel right away and then choose between 2D and 3D input. In this case, I simply use the start and end frame from the Kling video example. That gives you a good sense of how different platforms can work together. First, a panoramic scene is generated and you can edit it with Nano Banana. You can literally move around inside the image. In my experience, the best results come when you let the AI handle the selection logic. Let's put it this way. That's when the prompt mesh and the world building feel most aligned. You can also expand existing worlds. Watch what happens here. This is the version without expansion. And here's what it looks like after. The detail improves visibly. Have you come across Eleven Labs? It's one of the most active platforms when it comes to rolling out new features. One of the latest is the ability to generate both images and videos. On the home page, click on image and video on the left. It's still in beta. This gives you access to several models. For video, Sora 2, VO 3.1, Kling 2.5 and others. For images, Nano Banana, Seadream, GPT-1, Flux and more. That same mechanical creature with the scout appears again in today's video. I created one version using Seadance Pro. It's simple. Upload the start frame on the left, enter your prompt below, set your parameters, and on the right, you'll see the cost. This was the result in 480p. You could activate lip sync, upscale, recreate, or edit in studio if needed. The original image came from mid-journey. I also tested image generation in 11 labs using the same prompt but this time with the Flux One Context Pro model. There are more options here as well, but the image quality was noticeably lower. That said, this AI is the platform of my choice for voice generation. Eleven Labs gives it an edge when it comes to syncing visuals with speech. You've probably already heard the news. Udio has reached a settlement with Universal Music Group. Copyright infringement litigation settled. 
But what does that mean for users? Apparently, downloads of user creations might soon be disabled. The question is, will Suno face the same fate? It's not unlikely. Minimax Audio, a platform that's been around for a while, also offers music generation, now with its updated Model 2.0. Head to minimax.io and click Music on the left. At the top, you can set your style. Below that, there's a button called Lyrics. Click it and you can enter your own song text. Right now, Minimax is being surprisingly generous. 10,000 credits per user. I used the exact same settings I applied in Suno. Same styles, same lyrics. So let's compare. First, Suno. Steel clouds march across the blackened sun. Drums are orbit slow like a dying heart. Frosted breath whispers prayers to none. Now, Minimax. Iron Echoes. Iron Echoes. Hear them scream through the smoke, through the dark. first impression, Suno has more weight to it. The mix just feels more layered. But of course, industrial, minimal techno, dark ambient can mean very different things depending on interpretation. The only real option here is to try it out for yourself. Without much fanfare, OpenAI has rolled out the latest version of ChatGPT, version 5.1. The new model comes in two variants, ChatGPT 5.1 Instant and ChatGPT 5.1 Thinking. As usual, you can choose your model in the top left corner. If you're using ChatGPT 5.1 Auto, the system picks the most suitable version for each task on its own. To make the differences easier to understand, I asked ChatGPT to explain it as if I were a child. Here's what I got. GPT 4.0, older, friendly, balanced, best for everyday chatting and tasks. GPT 5, smarter, clearer, stronger. Best for bigger or tricky questions. GPT 5.1 thinking, slow but super careful. Best for deep reasoning and accuracy. GPT 5.1 instant, very fast, very efficient. Best for quick answers and daily use. On top of that, OpenAI has added more personalization options. You can now define how ChatGPT should respond. From default to professional to cynical and a few others, each style comes with a short description right underneath to help you choose. Since we're already talking about LLMs, Baidu has just released its latest version, Ernie 5.0 Preview. Naturally, I asked the AI itself what the differences are between the available models. This simple chart gives a good overview. If you want the best support, you'll need, no surprise here, Ernie 5.0. Preview 1022. Here's how Ernie explained it. Think of it like video games. X1.1 is the first game, 5.0 is the big sequel, and 1022 is the special edition with all the bonus features. So I asked what those bonus features actually are. First, superior creative writing. Second, advanced complex long form question understanding. Third, precise instruction following. According to one article, this LLM should be able to generate text, images, audio, and even video. But when I asked how the video generation works, the answer felt vague. The feature doesn't seem to be live yet. If you click writing, reading, or painting in the top menu, the system still falls back to Ernie 4.5 Turbo, so the wait continues. And by the way, if you want to know more about LLMs, I've tested 14 different models. Feel free to check that out. Links in the description. MotionStream is a platform for what the GitHub article calls real-time video generation 
with interactive motion controls. It's a research project by Adobe Research, Carnegie Mellon University, and Seoul National University. The idea, users can influence videos in real time without long processing delays. Here's how it works in one of the examples. First, you define static trackers, fixed areas in the video, shown here in pink. These are set as grids to lock parts of the scene. Then you apply additional trackers, shown in green, to move details on the left side of the screen, which is called the interactive canvas. On the right, you see how that motion plays out instantly as a generated video. Besides the dog example, there are other scenes too, like an elephant. Or this book with a wave. Very exciting. But after doing a bit more reading, I'd sum it up this way. Borrowing from Cornell University's description, it's about creating long, smooth videos in real time with sustained quality and no complex setup. If you're working with shifting camera angles, Quen Image Multiple Angles is a great tool for the job. I use it on FAL AI. Let's upload our two old friends, the Beast and the Scout, and see what happens. The interesting part is how specific the controls are. You can rotate left and right, move the camera forward, or change the vertical angle. Each of those settings can be adjusted precisely, and if you click More, you'll find a whole set of additional options. Let me show you two examples. Here's our original image. You've seen it before. Now we rotate the camera all the way to the left and then all the way to the right. The same functionality is also available on platforms like Replicate or Hugging Face. But what makes it really exciting is this. We've already seen that Kling 2.5 Turbo now supports start and end frames. So you take both of those camera angle variants drop them into your favourite video AI tool, and what you get is a very intentional, very controlled camera movement. There is no need to adjust the images and videos all the time because the platform doesn't know where and how to use the camera. And finally, something from the world of video to video. Pixverse has introduced a feature called Swap. When you visit the platform's homepage, you'll see it listed near the bottom. Click it, upload a video on the left, and select the area you want to replace. Unfortunately, you can only pick one. In this case, I marked the creature. Then I created a replacement image using Midjourney, Meta, or a similar tool. I uploaded that image and hit Create. The result looks pretty solid, though not every detail fits. The color of the cat-like monster doesn't really match. So here's a tip. When using Midjourney, Select your original image as a style reference to maintain consistent color tones. That's exactly what I did in my second try. I entered the prompt, added the original as a reference, then back to Pixverse, and the final result was genuinely convincing, really strong. I hope this gave you something useful to take away. I'll be doing more of these short news updates in the future. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon your channel. AI. Now you know.